afternoon and I'm also very delighted to have been invited to Beijing. It's my first ever trip to China, so very, very exciting, so thank you. Um, this afternoon I'm really going to talk about the Contemporary Art Museum in Society through a focus on my own institution, the Gallery Turner Contemporary in Margate, which you can see on the screen. The development of Turner Contemporary um, from a dream, and it really was a dream, to reality involved many, many people and it took more than 10 years to realise. So these things take a long time, as Andrea was saying, vis vis regeneration. Since opening the gallery has, since opening um, the gallery in 2011, we've welcomed more than 1.8 million visits, which I know is tiny in the sense of um, China and in other places, but given that the population of Margate is only 50,000 people, it's quite a substantial number of visitors. And I think we've had a real impact on the town and Kent more generally. Our vision, art inspiring change, and our values, ambition, collaboration, learning, and transformation inform absolutely everything we do. And we're a tiny um, charity, we're a, an independent charitable trust, and I report to a chair and board of trustees. And we are funded both by the public investment and by private money. The rather abstract um, term, regeneration, is often more associated with buildings, such as Turner Contemporary on the screen, and, develop and development. But for me, regeneration absolutely has to be about people. Um, and whilst working to develop this institution, I, I came to Margate in 2002, actually from Liverpool, um, I've really had to think about working with different people and changing hearts and minds mindsets. Margate in Kent, and I think I've got a map, there you can just see where it is, located in the UK, was one of the most popular seaside resorts in the late 19th century. It continued to flourish through the interwar period and into the 1970s and 1980s, and then as people in Britain were able to afford foreign holidays and foreign travel became much cheaper, the town went into complete decline. And by um, the 1990s, there were high levels of unemployment, low educational attainment, and a very transient population. And I think you still have to remember that even though we are here in this relatively prosperous southeast of England, Margate still has some of the biggest social challenges in the UK. Now, Turner, J.M.W. Turner, the painter, um, actually spent a lot of time in Margate, both as a child and later in his life. And he lived in this house, which sadly got pulled down um, in the 1930s. But he has a very direct relationship with this place. And he said to the art critic John uh, Ruskin that the skies over Margate are the loveliest in all Europe. And it was the quality of the light, um, Margate faces north, that really intrigued him. And the concept, and that's one of his um, fantastic paintings of Margate, mm. and the, the uh, concept to build a state of the art gallery really developed very much from local people who were concerned about uh, how Margate had gone into decline. And so a whole group of people got together to really persuade politicians that an art gallery might actually help support regeneration. And the county council, which is the, uh, covers the whole region, they felt that cultural regeneration, as evidenced in places like Liverpool, St. Ives and Bilbao, could actually support a different kind of economy um, for the town. And in the views of government and Arts Council England, there was a lack of cultural infrastructure in Kent. There were no major institutions, whether art galleries, theatres or concert halls. So the Arts Council really wanted to make sure that this part of the world had some cultural infrastructure in place. And from day one, I really wanted us to have a very local, regional, national and international profile. So long before the gallery had even been designed, um, and the, the site for the gallery was on a very difficult sit location, so hence it took quite a long time to come up with a, a design. I really wanted the gallery to be embedded into um, the local community. 
So I worked with a, a number of colleagues to ensure that art became much more relevant to people's lives. People often in the early years um, said I should return to wherever I had come from and really sort of focus my efforts on working in a gallery in another place. An art gallery wasn't relevant in this particular context. Local people felt that there should be an additional wing to the hospital, a new school, or even an ice skating rink. Now I'm sure all of those things absolutely are needed in Margate, but at the time the money was only available, the public investment was only available for an art gallery. And just a, a shot on the um, screen is of Laura Ford's a sculpture that she made referencing people who live on the margins of society. And this piece that was located in the public realm, um, along with a number of other works, really created a lot of um, discussion and conversation amongst local people. I think one of the great um, things that happened with Turner Contemporary was that David Chipfield Architects was um, appointed as the, as the architect to design the building. And Chipperfield um, is a first-class architect and we were able to work very closely with him to ensure that we got a building that really worked not only for art but for people. And having a building that works for people is so, so important. The art obviously needs environmental conditions and good security standards, but build but people need to feel very comfortable with buildings. They need to be able to, as Maria was saying, find the front door. They don't want to feel intimidated by a building. And I hope that really through um, us working with the, the architect David Chipfield, we arrived at something which really does work for art and people. Many of our visitors come to Turner Contemporary because they enjoy the social space and that's why they visit. They also enjoy seeing art as well. What we've sought to do is always to make connections um, between Turner, his curiosity, his spirit of investigation and contemporary artworks. And as we don't have a permanent collection, those contemporary artworks can come from artists living and working down the road or perhaps artists living and working here in China. We really want to push the boundaries like Turner did because Turner was ahead of his time. In the 19th century his work really wasn't understood and today artists are making fantastic works which challenge us, inspire us, but push at the boundaries and try and get us to think differently. And on our opening day, which um, it's hard to believe is, was in April 2011, um, Tracy Emin, the British artist here, um, came along with Jules Holland to open the building with a group of primary school children. And this is the scene we had outside the gallery for the entire weekend. Queues and queues of people wanting to see what their local gallery was, but people coming from all over the UK and further afield too. Uh, we've even had a visit from Her Majesty the Queen. Um, I think one of the important things to focus on is the impact that institutions such as Turn Contemporary have. As I said, we've had um, 1.8 million visits but we've also created jobs, both in the gallery and within the town. We've also put back money into the local economy, £41 million to date. And 3% of our visitors have never accessed a museum or gallery in their lives, which is an incredible number given that in the UK, all schools um, are encouraged to take children to museums and galleries. Central to our thinking is ambition and we've really ensured that our programme is world class and ambitious and for our opening show we commissioned the French artist Daniel Varenne to make a new work. We were then worked with Tate to borrow Rodin's The Kiss to put, putting together historical and contemporary. We've also um, borrowed works from artists rooms which again is um, managed by Tate, and this is a Sol the Wit wall painting, which came a key part of our learning space and has um, 
got lots of people to think in different ways about abstract art, about colour, and to explore their own creative potential. We also work, like many of my colleagues right around the country, with uh, young people and schools. And this is um, just a slide showing a Munoz piece with a, a local school group. We've shown um, exhibitions by JMW Turner. This is a, a blockbuster show of um, 80 watercolours and 12 paintings called Turner and the Elements. And this was a show that we worked with um, a number of international partners, so partners in Germany and Poland, to make happen in the UK too. This is a piece in our Sunley Gallery, a new commission by the Brazilian artist Maria Nepomuceno. And again, this artist really engaged with a group of people who then have formed into a studio group that are resident at the gallery and are driving elements of our content in our programme um, next year and over the forthcoming years. But this work was a multi-sensory experience, really got people to think about art in a very different way. And we also work with elderly people, many of whom have said that coming to the gallery reduces their sense of isolation. Um, here we've got people uh, looking at a, a knitted coat which was made for a boat uh, piece. We've worked with artists such as Tracy Emin, who, as I said earlier, is a British artist but has a link with Margate like Turner. She spent um, many of her young, useful years um, in Margate. We also work very, very closely with schools and young people and have a very direct cor correlation between that work and the work that is showing um, on the walls. And here we've got a Helen Frankenthaler exhibition. We've also looked to trying to engage with different kinds of artworks. So artefacts such as the overstuffed walrus from a museum in London, the Horniman Museum, uh, was juxtaposed alongside works um, by Turner as well as contemporary artists. And last year we worked with Tate Liverpool on a collaboration linked to Mondrian, so we showed an exhibition of um, Mondrian and colour, which was the first time that Mondrian's work had been looked at purely in terms of um, how he had changed his colour palette throughout his practice. Public engagement, engagement is really, really important to our programme and we try and work with different audiences to enable the gallery to become completely animated and this is one of our openings linked to a Jeremy Della show where we actually had a steel band in residence, our community choir singing, we had um, hawkers and owlers outside the building. We try and get a real sense of celebration linked to our openings. And this was um, Jeremy Della's piece, wall painting, painted um, onto the gallery walls. And again, to create this wall painting, we worked with local people to, to realise this um, work. This is a Dutch artist, Krein de Koning, who created a special piece for us in Margate, outside the building, which people could um, interact with and play on. And this work was also, at the same time, cited we made two, two versions of it, and the other version was sighted down the road in Folkestone, enabling really some sort of audience crossover to be developed, to build our audiences across Kent, but broad, more broadly across the UK and internationally. We work a lot with um, performances, sometimes with dancers like Yasmin Vardaman, we, we, we work with theatre companies, and this is Fuel. And this was a pop-up performance of uh, the Red Ladies who popped up all over the gallery and all over Margate. And I think it's that kind of animation that really helps to get people to feel um, more comfortable with accessing the big institution. This summer we worked with the, art, the British artist Grayson Perry to make a show of his, uh, it was a survey of his work from the last 20, 25 years called Provincial Punk. This show brought in 192,000 visits, which, which is an incredible number of pe people for a, a small gallery institution. But I think what it, it sought to do was really get people locally, nationally and internationally to talk and think about Grayson's work in a different way from how he has been thought about in the past. And I think what we saw in the galleries was that people were talking about his work 
talking about identity, talking about what it is to be British, and what it is to be creative too. Creativity is incredibly important within all our programmes. Um, and finally, just to, to look at that sort of amazing backdrop. So what inspired Turner all those years ago was the quality of light. And I think we continue to use that inspiration to drive forward our programmes. But in a fast-paced, changing world in which um, the Contemporary Art Museum is constantly having to, to rethink its positioning, there has never been a more important time for um, art museums and art galleries to exist. Thank you.